Hey, welcome everyone. This video is doing an overview of Android Auto. If your car natively supports it, um, and this is based on 2020 updates and patches, because so far here in early 2021, there are no recent updates from Google thus far. Now, when I say natively supported by a car, because this is running on my touchscreen that's built into my Toyota Highlander 2020 XLE Hybrid, um, I do have a button here on the left. I don't know if it's pick up on the camera, it's a bit dark, but if I press the map button, it'll go straight into Google Maps. If your car does not support Android Auto, you can still get it. There's still workarounds to getting it done. Uh, I have another video explaining how to get Android Auto, three different ways to get Android Auto up and running in a car if you really want to. But I'm focusing on the native experience that you know is compatible with your car. Now, we'll mention one more thing before we continue on is that some cars are very buggy with Android Auto. It's not an Android Auto issue, it's a car manufacturer issue. What I recommend is if you're looking for a new car, Test drive the car, connect your phone, and see what the Android Auto experience is like. Uh, make sure that you get your full money's worth, okay? So let's go over the main interface of all the apps that I have that are compatible with Android Auto. You'll see my list is pretty bare in minimum, which is fine. Um, this is all I have that's compatible on my cell phone that is compatible with Android Auto. Now, you can find more. There's certainly a lot more available. It's just Google made it difficult to find them for some bizarre reason. So I'll have a link in the video description. That'll take you to a direct link on all Android Auto apps that are available. One other thing I want to mention is that you cannot, I repeat, not watch videos even while the car is in park. Some people did make apps that could do that in the past, but Google has patched it and it's no longer possible once again. You might notice I have VLC player, but all it will do is play music from my cell phone. It will not play videos, okay? So just keep that in mind. The main function here, of course, you want to probably focus on the most when driving is... Well, Google Assistant and Google Maps. So we'll go over Google Maps really quick. While the car is parked, you can hit search and actually a keyboard will come up and you start typing away. Except when the car is in drive, the second it starts moving even slightly, uh, the keyboard will not work. If you tap here, it'll go to microphone mode instead. So let's try something. Square one. Showing results for square one. I put my British voice on. I just think it's more posh and prim and proper. But anyways, you can see it'll give you directions how to get to square one. Again, I find the experience in my car is particularly smooth. This is telling me my, my route. You can have other options such as destination stops. So for example, maybe you want to stop for gas. Um, that option is now available in Android Auto in the car. You can add a stop. So maybe you want to type in, you know, maybe a gas station or something. You can search by voice. And it works like any Google map experience while navigation is up and running. You can turn voice navigation on and off. Um, you can recenter back to where you are and the map itself. You can choose alternate routes. You can set different view modes. So for example, you can change to satellite view, for example. You can see traffic on and off. I always recommend leaving traffic on. So as you can see, you will get some notifications up here uh, if the message does come in. I'm not going to get into too much because those are private conversations. But if for any reason you do want to see what's happening with those, those uh, messages, you can tell Google to read it out loud, which again, I'm not going to do. But you can also hit the notification bell icon here with the option to see all your text messages, uh, WhatsApp messages, and any other compatible apps with Android Auto. Uh, you can also have it play what is happening. So... Google Assistant will actually read out the message to you. So it's, it's, it's a safe way of, you know, keeping up with your messages uh, and see what's going on. <clears throat> As you will notice that Google Maps is now in a kind of a dark theme mode. Um, you know, for you guys, I sat in my car for three hours waiting for it to get dark. No, I'm just kidding. I didn't do that. But y there is a dark mode available that will kick in depending on uh, when the sun is starting to set. But let's go over some of the coolest things. And that's, of course, Google Assistant. That is what the key thing is here about Android Auto to be safe and hands free. So let's try some commands. Navigate to square one. Navigating to square one shopping center. Call Sharon Mobile. Calling Sharon Rye. Turn on the dining room lights. Sure, turning five lights on. Play some rap music. All right, here's a Spotify playlist called Hip Hop Favorites. So you do have music apps compatibility. So for example, there's VLC, as I mentioned earlier. Spotify is probably my go-to one. Uh, you can go through your libraries list. Uh, you can go to your playlist. 
you can see you know trending songs and whatnot it's a it's a pretty much the experience that you would expect from the spotify app of course the interface is very different from what you would find in say um, your computer or your regular cell phone app but it works and it does everything you'd want to so how dependent Android apps are purely depends on the developer if they're going to do a good job or not. Now, there are some other apps baked into Android Auto. This is something like Google has placed in there. Uh, so some examples are, say, the calendar, news, podcasts, uh, and even the weather and reminder. You'll notice that some of them have like a Google Assistant icon. So the news has one, uh, reminders, and weather. That means the Google Assistant will talk back to you that there's no uh, and there's another example of how the notification pops up there's no um interaction with text formatting so for example if i hit the weather what i'm going to get is it basically telling me what's the weather right now in brampton it's two degrees and mostly cloudy today it'll be mostly cloudy with a f so as you can see it's basically a hands-off experience as the entire idea of google assistant here and pretty much android auto at its core is not meant to be an entertainment system you're not meant to watch videos you're not meant to interact with it too much it's supposed to be hands off and being safe that's the core function of it um, you do have some other functions like you, know, you can go through your contacts list which i'm kind of blurring out so i'm not sure why i'm showing it to you guys and that's pretty much a summary of how android auto works not much more i'm going to get into unless of course you want to stick around for anyone who has kids so for example i do have a toddler it is pretty difficult to keep him entertained in the car, especially for a short, you know, 20 minute, half an hour drive. He's always asking for a cell phone to look at. I don't want to give him a screen. So what do we do is have some fun with Google Assistant. So here's some examples. Tell me a joke. I've got a few good ones. Which Canadian dessert has antlers? Chocolate mousse. <laughs> So as you can see, you can have some good fun with Google Assistant. You just got to know which commands to kick in. Some other ones I use with my kid is... What sound does a sheep make? These are sheep. <laughs> so, you know, my kid will be sitting in the back seat and he'll be saying the commands or sometimes I have to say it for him because he's sitting in the back. Google Assistant... Um, is pretty responsive for people sitting in the front row of my car. I'm not sure if it will differ for every, everybody else, but in the middle row, it's a little bit tough for Google Assistant here. So I'm having to say the commands and my kids having a good time and good fun. Of course, as a parent, this might drive you crazy, but it's better than them looking at a screen. Uh, another pro tip is as a parent, in the winter time, about November, December, it's a seasonal thing. It disappears after that, but you can actually tell Google Assistant to say, hey, Santa, tell me a joke. And Santa will come on and start telling a joke. It's it's a great way to entertain your kids. So that's pretty much it. So again, this is basically a summary of updates from Google based on 2020 updates. There is a rumor that sometime in 2021, Google will release some minor interface changes so you can adjust the wallpaper. You can just faintly see these kind of circular patterns starting here and it kind of expands this way. Nothing special, nothing exciting. I don't know if you can use custom wallpapers and pictures, there's a rumor that it's going to be pre-made and pre-selected wallpapers, but at least you can kind of jazz it up a little bit. Now, there was another app developed by somebody in which it was sole purpose was to let you customize this interface here, the background especially. My understanding is that last I read about it is that the app lost its compatibility with Android Auto. Some patches from Google kind of broke compatibility, so it's possible that Google might just introduce themselves instead. So that's pretty much it for me. If you found this video useful, be sure to check my social links in the video description, and thanks for watching.